Pre Welcome to the third annual National Amateur All-Star Baseball Tournament from Taylor Field in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Featuring the best amateur baseball players in the nation in a round-robin format. Today, Babe Ruth Baseball meets the American Amateur Baseball Conference. And a very pleasant good to your great Steve Garvey, the honorary commissioner. And Steve, bring our fans up to date here. What is this tournament, the NAABT, all about? Well, this is a celebration of the best 16 to 18 year old ball players in the country, representing five leagues American Amateur Baseball Congress, National Amateur Baseball Federation, Dixie, Pony, and Babe Ruth. And you're going to see these young men who are going to be our future college baseball stars and future professional and major league stars. Each one of these young men is representing their league throughout the country, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Now we have, in addition to those uh, properties and territories, and of course the nation to our north, Canada, we also have 42 states being represented here today. And we'll see a couple of these young stars today. One is for the Babe Ruth Ball Club. He's He'll lead off, he'll play second base. His name is Brent Abernathy. He's from that baseball, youth baseball hotbed of Marietta, Georgia, and this kid is a comer. And he wears number six, so that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good but thing. But Brent has very special qualities. In other words, he, not only can he hit, run, and throw, but he's got instincts that you just can't teach. And that's why we're going to watch him a lot today, because he does things that, that some may major leaguers don't do and even though he's a junior in high school he's destined for stardom on the double abc team a third baseman has already hit three home runs this week eduardo guzman this kid can hit eduardo uh, isn't very tall but he's got that short strike zone and short swing that really has the ball jumping off these aluminum bats and we're going to talk about the bats today but he's got legitimate power feels his position very very well and he's the other player to watch today as we mentioned this is a week-long round robin event the records of the ball clubs one victory and one loss apiece they go head to head next we'll be back for the starting lineup so i have the first pitch for you from Pine Bluff, Arkansas in just a moment. The 1995 Totino's National Amateur All-Star Baseball Tournament is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola, always a champion. By United Airlines and its 55,000 employee owners. Come fly our friendly skies. And by Donruss Trading Cards. We are back at Taylor Field in Pine Bluff getting set for the start of our ball game. Right now, let's go down to the field to the man they call Sarge. Here is Gary Matthews. Gary? Thanks, thanks a lot there. Uh, George, your team's one and one. Would you tell them to, to motivate them? We know you need this ball game uh, today. Well, I just tell them to go out there, relax, and uh, do the best they possibly can. Once you go out there and be prepared, uh, you can take advantage of the opportunity. So I just feel that uh, we're ready to go out there and play the game that we played uh, the Tuesday night. So we just go out there and relax and execute. Is there any one player on the Babe Ruth team we should look at? Well, you look at the whole team because they're ready. I mean, they're good players, have a lot of talent, and, and they're ready to go out there and uh, show people they can play the game of baseball. Okay, well, good luck. Throw it back up to you there, Dave Steve. Well, there's okay. a couple of good hitters right there, Bob, I'll tell you. I you know, would say. They got a few home runs between them. That's right. And there's a man who's uh, he's got a, a very smart device there for a day like this in Pine Bluff. Summer's here in Pine Bluff. It's going to be about 85, 90, and uh, we're set. Let's take a look at the lineup for Babe Ruth. Brent Abernathy, the young man we talked about, leads off at second. Andrew Lynch in left field, hitting number two. The shortstop is Dennis Bruno, a switch hitter batting in the number three hole. The catcher is Chad Suter. Batting number five is first baseman Don Ross. Jonathan Bystrek is the DH today, batting sixth. Hitting seventh and in right field, Scott Prather. Danny Zabladil is the center fielder, batting eighth. And Todd Thompson at third base will bat number nine. And pitching for double ABC today is left-hander Brad Wilkerson. First, let's take a look at the defense that Wilkerson will have behind him today. Brian Weiss will be in left field. Jeremy Dodson in center. Cash Riley is in right. Eduardo Guzman is at third. And boy, not only with the bat, Steve, he can also do it with the glove. Guzman has started a couple of double plays in one game already this week. Joseph at short, Shelley second, new at first, and Davis is the catcher with Stephen Bess on the mound. There you look at uh, young Stephen as he gets set to work here to Brent Abernathy. And Steve Bess is a tall, good-looking fastball pitcher, has a nice tight slider. 
We'll throw a change from time to time and just look at those statistics. 11 and 0, 2.00 earn run average. He's from Nashville, Tennessee, and those were his high school statistics from this past spring. Brent Abernathy leading it off here for Babe Ruth with one victory and one defeat. And it's an opening strike to get our ball game underway. Abernathy, a 17 year old, he is a rising high school senior. And the, the scouts are already drooling over this young man. A marvelous tournament so far. He had a home run in the first game against Pine Bluff. His first swing of the tournament, he lifted one out of the ballpark. The off-speed breaking ball makes it 0-2. Against a 93-mile-per-hour fastball, too. <laughs> he just turned on that ball a lot like uh, George Foster and uh, a few of the guys did in the home run hitting contest we had the yes, first night. Yes, we're going to have highlights of that later. and Or lowlights. As the case may be, yes. <laughs> That's okay, Steve. You, it's, it's hard to swing, you know, in a three-piece suit. And here's a swing and a fly ball to deep left center field, and this one is gone. So Brett Abernathy does it again. His second home run of the tournament. That's what we talked about. This young man has great power. His first swing in the tournament, he hits a home run. And today, leading off, he hits a home run. That's twice now. He's let off games to hit home runs. So one to nothing. Babe Ruth takes the lead. I'm telling you, this kid, <laughs> you think the college recruiters and the pro scouts are... And he even hits off the front foot that time, which is which shows there's a lot of power in the arms and wrists. A lot of times guys will stay back, just pivot, use the legs too. But that time, his weight had shifted. He got through the ball, hit it about 365 to left center. So one to nothing with Abernathy's Babe Ruth Club in front. Here is the left-handed bat of Andrew Lynch, young man from Massachusetts, making his first appearance in the tournament. And this one is in the left for a base hit. So this Babe Ruth ball club last night was held to just one run in a defeat against a Dixie, seven to one. But boy, they have come out swinging the sticks here this morning. Bar reminds us a little bit of uh, our College World Series games a couple of weeks ago where you and I saw tremendous offensive and power displays by several of the players at the College World Series. Yeah, they had uh, set the all-time CWS record for most home runs in a tournament. And we're starting off that way uh, here this week with these young men. Dennis Bruno, switch hitting shortstop. Batting now for Babe Ruth, this young man from Millville, New Jersey. When our audience looks at these young players, think in terms of a couple of years from now, I would think some of these young players will be playing in that College World Series, and some of them have been drafted and will sign right from here, and you'll see them in the professional and major league ranks in just a couple of years also. I would think, too, for a scout, be it college or professional, that would have to be one of the toughest things to be able to forecast into the future what these kids are going to be in terms of height and weight, what their abilities, how far that, those abilities will take them. Well, the scouts look for raw skills, especially in the high school players, and they look for they look for mature skills from the college players who, after their junior years, can be drafted. So at different stages of maturity, uh, the scouts can be able to judge and say, well, this, this young man is ahead of the curve, so to speak, for a potential major leaguer, or he isn't quite there yet. Maybe he does need seasoning in the college level. And that's inside for a four-pitch walk to Dennis Bruno. So young Stephen Bass on the mound for Double ABC having some uh, difficulties with his control, and now Chad Suter, the catcher, is coming up. And if that last uh, name sounds familiar to you, it should. This is the son of Bruce Suter, the great relief pitcher from the National League days with the Cardinals and Cubs and Braves. And his son, Chad, is a whale of a player in his own right. Three-time All-County down there in Kennesaw, Georgia, and a 95 All-Stater. He is going to uh, attend Tulane and continue his college baseball there. Chad, I guarantee you Bob can hit a split-fingered fastball. <laughs> if there is any pitch <laughs> he could handle. I bet you his dad's been throwing him those split fingers for years now. <laughs> of course, his dad was a tremendous relief pitcher and, and quite a competitor. And I remember those All-Star games where he'd come in the eighth and ninth inning against the American League and they'd never touch a pitch because they just didn't see a great split finger like he threw. And this one off the mid of the catcher, Mark Davis, and the runners will advance. Lynch to third, Bruno to second. We will await the scoring 
uh, probably a pass ball. That was a rising fastball. Just got up a little bit on the release point. Didn't follow through. Steve getting used to the mound right now. First time he's been on the mound here at Pine Bluff and Taylor Field. All these players are stars in their own right. And they come here and they have one practice together and then they play six games. It's uh, it's tough in many ways. And in some ways, it's a, it's a great bonding and fellowship. A ball and a strike now. Uh, two balls and a strike, rather, on uh, Chad Suter. But nobody out. One run is in on the Brent Abernathy home run. So the Babe Ruth All-Stars with the early lead. And threatening for more here. This uh, Suter is the cleanup hitter. Two and two. That's his best fastball so far. That probably was in the mid 80s. Good tail on it. Came back across the plate. To short and Kevin Joseph throws about it first. Scoring on the play is Andrew Lynch. Two nothing. Babe Ruth. Kevin played that ball very, very well, but he had the runner at third base, if you just would have looked. The runner really run, sprinting towards third. Uh, almost looked back at shortstop and kind of enticed him to throw him out. The head coach is Steve Adair, young man from Dallas. He's a collegiate head coach, former head man at SMU, now a high school head coach at Dallas Baptist. One ball with no strikes on first baseman Don Ross. Oh for one so far in the tournament. 17 years old. One and one. Best continues to struggle. Now falls behind two and one. That was the changeup that time. He throws a three-finger changeup, almost a circle change, so to speak. Fouled away. Two balls and two strikes on Ross. Well, Bob, as we said in the College World Series, one swing could break things open back there because of the aluminum bats and the fences and the strength of the hitters. Same situation here. Babe Ruth up two to nothing at the top of the first inning. Dennis Bruno at third base. And uh, nearly hit him, and I think it did. Came right in and nicked him on the forearm, so Ross gets aboard. And now Babe Ruth with runners at first and third, and Jonathan Bystruck, the DH, is next. Let's take a look at this inside pitch. Barely just clips him on the tricep or bicep. That's the one thing about aluminum bats, Bob. You can, yeah, there it is. Just gets him. We could hear it up here in the booth. But if it hits aluminum, it's got that little ping to it, where wood sometimes, if you just nick it, can sound like skin or, or like the jersey top. Runners at first and third with one away. Bystrike, the DH, a man from Boothwood, Pennsylvania. Good double play situation for double ABC. Been some very to use an old cliche, nifty double plays yeah. so far in this World Series. Some diving stops and quick turns at the keystone position. And you know how difficult it is, Steve, working with infielders. Uh, you get a, a certain rhythm to the defense. And here, these young men are, are turning double plays, and they most likely haven't seen each other before Monday. Turning double plays with one practice and, and a couple of games under their belts. And that's why this is a tournament where, from day one, you see the progression up until the championship game on Saturday. It's just as if I know I'm involved with a lot of baseball camps, and there's a big one out in, in Los Angeles now, the Baseball Development Center, and they've got a great one. And, and they always say from Monday to Friday, you see tremendous improvement. Well, here with quality players, you see not so much personal improvement, but improvement from a teamwork standpoint. The double play combination, the working between the catcher and the pitcher, the outfielders hitting the infielders on cutoffs. So that's, that's the maturation of playing every day for a short period of time with the same guys. Dennis Bruno at third, and Don Ross at first for the Babe Ruth All-Stars. They lead 2-0. They're batting here in the top of the first. We should point out this is a seven-inning game. One man out, and Bystrek, who is a catcher by trade, serving as the DH today, trying to keep it going here against right-hander Steve Bess. 
Now three balls and no strikes. That seems to be target throwing a little bit right now, not really rearing back and, and letting the ball go. Sometimes you can be a little tentative early in the game. And that one's in there to make it three and one. Good pitch, much more aggressive on that pitch. The first time on TV for almost all these young men, especially on ESPN. And don't think that this kid doesn't have pitching talent. Best was drafted by the A's a few weeks ago. Three and two. And he can hit a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. Talking to uh, Steve Adair. He said he can swing the bat very, very well. When you see a combination like that, you uh, you think of some of the players recently who drafted who are two-way players. Kieschnick out of uh, Tennessee. Which is Utah State had a good one a year or two ago. And the MVP of the College World Series is pretty good. Mark Katze from Fullerton. Right. Saved a couple of games in the series. What do you have, three home runs, something like that? Won the championship game. That's right. Amazing. And some of these kids are going to be the Mark Katzes in two or three years from now. Sure. A lot of college scouts here. A lot of these kids have already uh, been tendered to college scholarship and have accepted. Uh, weighing those that were drafted, their options, uh, thinking perhaps of turning professional. We have two first-round picks in this tournament. Runner at first on the move, but it's matters not. It's ball four to Bystrek, so the bases are loaded. The second walk of the inning. And let's go downstairs to Gary Matthews. Yeah, Steve, Bob, I was just uh, uh, wondering with George telling his players just to have some fun and relax. You know, George has been through these things before. And sometimes it's a little bit uh, nervousness that our kids have out there. But I got to tell you, this Brent Abernathy, he's a player that I'm sure is going to be, looks like he has that no doubt on him, but they seem to be relaxed playing out there. Well, he's got the focus, too, Gary. He really has it in the eyes. And, you know, he goes up there. He's a lot of confidence in himself. The George Foster coaching, too, Bob. If, if we see the batter step out of the box on every other pitch, then we'll know George has a lot of influence on him. <laughs> he used to irritate those professional major league pitchers by stepping out and waiting till he was ready. One ball at one strike on right fielder Scott Prather batting for the Babe Ruth All-Stars. Top of the first and 2-0 our score. Well, the new rule would uh, put a crimp at Mr. Foster's style. They're going to make him stay in the box after the All-Star break, so... That's right. You know, we've already had a grand slam in this tournament. Now with bases loaded in the top of the first inning, uh, will lightning strike again, possibly, even with clear skies? Ben Scott would really like to help out his teammates. He was the losing pitcher for his ball club yesterday in a 7-1 defeat against the Dixie All-Stars. Two balls and two strikes. We just had a shot at George Foster. He looks in pretty good shape, Bob. He had about eight or nine out of this ballpark the other night. Those tall guys with big sweat strokes, you know, yeah, that's it's much easier. That's for right. Them. You line drive hitters, yeah. a little tougher. I didn't want to change my swing. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two on Prather. Base is loaded here with Bruno the man at third base. Don Ross is at second. Jonathan Bystrick at first base. Steve Best will have to throw the fastball and come in. And got him swinging. So a big strikeout for Bess. Takes away the sacrifice fly possibility. Two gone in the inning now. And this is Steve Best's best pitch of the game so far. Take a look at this fastball. Really sinks down and away. And swings right over it for strike three, two away. Danny Zabladil, the center fielder. Best getting loose this inning, that's for sure. It's probably thrown at least 20, 25 pitches so far. One for five is Danny in the tournament. Headed to Ohio State. Going to be a Buckeye. Big Ten baseball. That'll look. Well, I mean, here's the man, Steve Date. Here's the guy that left the warmth of Tampa to play in the Big Ten spring. And still graduated. <laughs> kind of uh, decision-making process. Uh, it was great, though. It really was. I was losing seven or eight pounds of football game, and I decided, well, I'll go up north. Key pitch right now for Bess. Behind in the count again, as he has been on most of the batters this first inning. It's been a big problem for him. 
Ryan Abernathy hitting a home run when he was ahead in the count. As a hitter, you like that situation. Two and two. Steve's right on the edge of having a disaster sending. Then he comes back with a good pitch like that that evens it up for him. And with two and two bases loaded. He has a pitch to waste. Will he throw a breaking ball? And he does. He's going to get out of this mess with just two runs scoring. Guzman, the third baseman, will make the catch. And that will retire the sign. So Babe Ruth with a couple of runs, including the home run by Brent Abernathy. Two hits, no errors, and three men left on base. We move to the bottom of the first, two nothing. We move to the bottom of the first inning, two nothing, Babe Ruth. Here's the batting order for the American Amateur Baseball Congress All-Stars. Leading off and playing left field will be Brian Weeks. Jeremy Dodson in center, bats second. Eduardo Guzman, the hard-hitting third baseman, bats third. Pitcher Stephen Best is the cleanup man. Cash Riley in right field will bat fifth. At second, Jason Shelley hitting sixth. Batting seventh and at first base is Denny New hitting eighth and at shortstop Kevin Joseph. And the catcher batting ninth is Mark Davis. The Babe Ruth defense, Andrew Lynch is in left. Denny Zabladil in center. Scott Prather is in right. Thompson at third, Bruno at short, Abernathy second, Ross at first base. Chan Suter, the son of Bruce Suter, behind the plate and on the mound is Brad Wilkerson. This left-hander, Steve, out of Owensboro, Kentucky, going to the University of Florida on a baseball scholarship. That's right, uh, drafted by the Dodgers. The Dodgers uh, trying to draft as many left-handed pitchers as possible. <laughs> What's Front Clare up to, I think? Well, it's been a uh, kind of a drought of left-handers with the Dodgers over the last couple of years, and they're really trying to develop some good young left-handed pitching from youth organizations like Babe Ruth and college baseball. Brian Weiss having a good tournament, hit a home run here on Tuesday. Also worked on the mound yesterday for this double ABC team. One ball and one strike. Well, you mentioned, Bob, a lot of two-way players here at this All-Star Tournament. It shows the versatility and the athleticism of these young men. And that's usually what happens to this level is the real good athletes can pitch and hit. One ball, two strikes. Brian Weiss is from Greenwell Springs, Louisiana, and he is headed to play his college baseball for Ron Polk down at Mississippi State. And one of the reasons that he told us that he chose to play at Mississippi State was they were going to let him both play in the field and pitch. And that's something he uh, very much wants to do, is to play the outfield on the days when he's not on the mound. Well, usually one team has a player like that. Of course, you talked about Katze or Cal State Fullerton. And then once they sign professionally, they usually have to make a decision one way or the other. Someday you're going to see a, a guy come out of the outfield and be a good relief pitcher. They'll bring him in, spot him from time to time. We may see that with Todd Helton and the Colorado Rockies. Who knows? Their first round pick out of Tennessee. Thompson with the backhand and guns him down. Nice play at third by Todd Thompson. Excellent play by Todd going down the line. A la Brooks Robinson plants the foot, as we see here, right down the line, makes a stop, right foot planted, little throw hop, and guns it to first, gets him by a step and a half. Well, you mentioned the name Brooks Robinson. That will make you mighty popular here in Arkansas. One of the favorite sons, of course, Brooks is from Little Rock. One of the two great Hall of Fame third basemen that the state produced. The other, of course, is George Kell. One ball and no strikes on Jeremy Dodson, the center fielder. Just outside the Dallas area. Dodson from Sherman, Texas. About 50 miles north of Dallas. Two balls and no strikes. He has signed to play with the Baylor Bears. Brad Wilkerson on the mound for the Babe Ruth All-Stars. 18 years old. In high school was 12 and 1 this spring. Nice size for a pitcher too, Bob. Six foot 190. He's compact. Like a, a Tom Seaver size pitcher who really pushes off the mound well, uses his legs. He's got a good running fastball, good curveball. Three and one. Let's take a look at his delivery this time. See how he sets up, takes his sign. Now gets up, really cocks that front shoulder and keeps those hips closed, and then strides and, and really uncoils. And Dotson draws the wall. 
Well, you look back over the high school numbers for Wilkerson, and boy, the stats just jump out at you, Steve. 150 strikeouts in 84 innings, and he only walked 30 men. That's a great spring. ratio. Isn't that wonderful? But you know, that's where a young man who has some God-given ability really dominates at that level in high school. Then once he gets to college, it starts to even out a little bit. He's got to progress. He's got to mature and develop himself even more, his pitches and location, so that he can get out the good college players and then be ready for the professional ranks. Eduardo Guzman. This is the young man we talked about at the top of our broadcast. Three home runs already in the tournament. Very impressive slugging percentage, we might add. And Guzman is just one of those hitters that he is going to attack and uh, go after these pitches. It really doesn't matter how you pitch him. He's hit uh, pitches that have been up and in, outside, all out of the ballpark. Great strength. It's a great strength, a good strike zone, and good bat position. I always look for a young man, see how well balanced he is at the plate, number one. Number two, where his bat's positioned. Number three, if he keeps that front shoulder closed. And then how patient is he in the strike zone? And Warder does all those very well. Pop this one down the line and left. Lynch coming over, still coming. And into foul territory to make the catch. But the dangerous Eduardo Guzman has been retired here in the first, and that will bring up Stephen Best, the pitcher. I have a tendency to breathe a sigh of relief when you get rid of Guzman. But Stephen Best can hit, too. He had a base hit and an RBI in the game here Tuesday. This young man from Nashville, Tennessee, an outstanding student, and he is headed down to play his college baseball at Rice University. That's a program that is up and coming. They made the NCAA tournament field this year for the first time in their history. That's, of course, the team that had Jose Cruz Jr. Uh, lead them into the NCAA playoffs. This man will join the program next year, Stephen Benz. And, that, and all it takes sometimes, Bob, is, is one quality player like that who brings a lot of recognition to a school, and it really helps with their, with their scouting and recruiting. 2-0 ball game with the Babe Ruth All-Stars on top, bottom of the first. And it's now 0-2. Brad Wilkerson with a good curveball. Good bender really freezes the left-handed hitters. Starts it outside of the plate against the righties and breaks it right over the outside corner. Catcher sets up inside this time. When we get our shot from center field for our viewers, if you watch the catcher slide one way or the other, he'll give us the location. That time he points inside with the fastball side. Number one sets up there. And up and in for the strikeout of Stephen Benz. So Wilkerson picks up his first K of the ball game, and that's it for double ABC. No runs, no hits, and a man left. Two nothing. Babe Ruth at the end of one. Part of the festivities here in Pine Bluff this week, the home run derby that we had here on Tuesday evening. My partner signing a few autographs. This is Steve Trout putting himself back on the disabled list with that swing. But he also, we should point out, finished second with five home runs. Garvey, of course, always looking for an extra advantage. They would allow him only one bat. But of course, the hero of the home run hitting contest was Big George Foster. And he won the home run hitting contest with seven home runs. He is the manager of the Babe Ruth All-Stars. Boy, George can still hit him a mile. If you would have just gotten some pitches to hit, I'm sure you would have had more than one home run. Sure, two. <laughs> George looks so effortlessly up there. I know. Smooth swing. Todd Thompson made that fine backhand play third, leads off for the Babe Ruth All-Stars here in the second. 2-0, Babe Ruth leading. Again, to remind, a seven-inning game. And it's 0-2, and Stephen Best coming out throwing some strikes here. He's loose now. Of course, he threw almost 30 pitches the first inning, but he's comfortable on the mound, and he threw some very good pitches once he got two outs. And he's back, and he's ready. One ball and two strikes. The man to play, Todd Thompson, from Trail, British Columbia, just north of the border, up by Vancouver. Was the top Canadian hitter last year at the World Youth Tournament at Brandon, Manitoba. And strikes out swinging Bess with some high heat and picks up his second strikeout. Both strikeouts have been on high fastballs. 
And as you'll see this time, Steve Best really drives, so does that ball up, probably out of the strike zone, and right on by. Tough pitch to hit. Top of the order now, and Mr. Abernathy is back. Let off the ball game, hitting an 0-2 pitch for a home run. If I was Bess, I don't think I'd throw him a fastball now. Now, Abernathy's got to be thinking to himself, maybe he'll start me off with that breaking pitch. Let's see this challenge. And this one hit the air to left center field. Weiss and Dodson chasing. It's going to be the center fielder, Dodson, to make the catch. Almost another one. And it seems, Steve, that he didn't even have the fat part of the bat on that one. No, no, definitely ball was, was in on him that time, but he, as we can see on this catch, tracked the ball very, very well in center field. Good job right there. And we see Abernathy coming around, almost misses the bag and says, wow, another half an inch up that bat, I got two in a row. Base is empty, two gone for left fielder Andrew Lynch. But you see, Bess's ball is starting to tail now. We're in the first inning, first couple of batters, it was very, very straight. And let's chalk well, that up to being a little nervous, a little, little tense, a little tight. Well, and it's a little early, too. I mean, it's, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning starts a little early for these kids. And that, too, is probably a breaking ball. It's a slider. All and two on Lynch. Well, Bess looks like a new man. Yes, he does. We see those catcher signs again from center field. Usually one's a fastball, two's a curve, three's a slider. Four or the wiggling of the fingers would be a changeup or some type of minimum movement pitch. Strike three. So in three pitches, Best strikes out Lynch, picks up two Ks in the inning, and one, two, three, go the Babe Ruth All-Stars. Two nothing in the middle of the second. We are back in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And Babe Ruth leading 2-0 as we move to the bottom of the second inning. Let us go downstairs to Sarge. Gary Matthews is standing by with Joe Cooper, the pride of Marshall, Michigan. Well, Joe is actually the executive director of the Amateur American Baseball Congress. And we're going to talk just a little bit about how to get involved with it and how he actually goes out and picks players for this program. Well, actually, we recruit all over the country with any of our programs. Our Connie Mac, we've got some great Connie Mac around the country in our 18 and under program. We encourage our managers and our people out in the field to let us know players that have potential for playing in Division I or have the potential for possibly being drafted in the June draft. And that's exactly what happened. Well, just thank you for your participation. I'd like to have you, and this is in our third year, and it uh, looks like we're growing from there. Yeah, but Sarge, you add a lot to it, and thank you. Thank you. Okay, Gary, thank you, and thanks to all our league presidents. It's a great coming together of these organizations, Steve, to bring this to fruition now in its third year, as they were talking about. And, you know, the name of the game is to give these kids opportunities to play, and this is just tremendous that these kids, these elite players, these all-stars, have a chance to go head-to-head -head with some of the best in the country. And we were talking about this yesterday. What a wonderful opportunity. You know, us, us guys that are past 39 right now never had this opportunity. <laughs> All we had was essentially Little League. I know I played Pony, but you didn't have the all-star tournaments that you could go to to really play with your peers and make, make a little trip and get that experience. And this was what the National Amateur Baseball Tournament does. Cash Riley is the leadoff man for double ABC here. Moving to the bottom of the second. One well, ball, one strike. If Cash could ever make it to the major leagues, he's going to be able to cash in on that name, is he? Probably be a finance major. That's right. And when he's... When he's hitting well and the team's winning, he's going to cash and carry that team to the championship, right? That's right. Sorry. Drafted by the Dodgers. And old Powder River there from Wilkerson. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> I love that term, Powder River. Brad Our Wilkerson center, on the mound. Center field camera. He gives us the, the one-fingered fastball. Big bouncer to Abernathy. Easy play, one away. So Abernathy doing it with the bat and the glove here. One gone in the second, and Jason Shelley, the second baseman, coming up next. One, see, one thing we're going to see a lot of, Bob, is, is hustling. These young men understand that they're playing with their contemporaries and their peers and, and really want to show everybody that they deserve to be here. So one thing we're, uh, we're going to see a lot of is hustling and these young men 
Really want to make a good impression. Lots of scouts in the stands. Opening strike at Jason from Plainfield, Illinois, under the Joliet County Mac uh, program. He will play his college baseball at Western Michigan University. It's a pretty good baseball school. Yes, it is. Developed a lot of professional and major league players. Shelley is looking for his first hit here in this tournament. He's 0 for 4 so far. And he may have it right here, but Prather can't get to it and passed it to the fence. A stand up double for Jason Shelley, the first hit for double ABC today. Jason hit that ball very, very well. As a matter of fact, he hit it harder than Scott Prather anticipated. Scott breaking in a little bit that time, and the ball goes by him. We'll see a replay of it. Gets his hands up, takes that high pitch, and hits it where it's pitched. Now Prather goes after it, and the ball slices by him. He does a good job of fielding it off the wall, hitting the cutoff man, and holding him to a double. One of the speed with which the ball was hit, and coming off the bat of a right-hander, that one tailing away from Prather. And those kind of plays can make you look bad sometimes. Good ricochets off those TPXs. <laughs> One ball and no strikes on first baseman Denny New from Carrollton, Texas. Trinity Christian High School. Steve Adair, the head coach of this AABC outfit, coached Denny in high school. <laughs> and there's a drive to left field. Lynch will make the catch. That's out number two. The Stanley Cup Finals continue tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. The New Jersey Devils, and haven't they played great in Detroit after winning the first two games? They move it back to the Meadowlands for game three tonight. 1995 Quest for the Cup begins at 7.30, and then the finals tonight at 8 on ESPN. All right, Bro Dewar has been fantastic mm -hmm. between the pipes for New Jersey. Shutting down that high-powered Red Wing offense. It's been a whale of a series. We'll enjoy watching that game tonight. Losing your first two games at home has to be very, very disturbing for the Red Wings, but they play well at home on the road, too. If they throw an octopus out here in Pine Bluff, though, we'll know something's up. We'll barbecue it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kevin Joseph, the shortstop from Dallas, and so far in the tournament, 0 for 5. He has already put one college season under his belt. He'll be a rising sophomore at Rice next spring. One ball and one strike. Jason Shelley at second, two gone, second inning. The club at the plate, double ABC trailing two nothing. Brad Wilkerson is on the mound for Babe Ruth. off the plate two and one <laughs> down the line and right pray they're coming over into foul territory to squeeze out number three no runs and a hit and a man left We've played two innings at Taylor Field in Pine Bluff, Arkansas with the Babe Ruth All-Stars up to zip. The unblinking eye of the professional baseball scout watching every swing and every pitch here in Pine Bluff. And why not? Some of the best amateur talent in the country has been assembled here, all under the umbrella of the Amateur Baseball Incorporated. And Steve, this organization uh, developed by the gentleman we'll be hearing from in just a moment, Ron Berryman. This is uh, just a tremendous amalgamation of the top five amateur leagues. It really is, and it was formed in 1992 by the directors of these five organizations. And the AABI is really the organizing and, and marketing arm of this event. And Ron Berryman is the president. So, Sarge, let's talk to him. Great. Hi, I have uh, Ron Berryman here. He's uh, actually the president and CEO of the Amateur All-Star Baseball uh, Tournament. And Ron, how about the tournament here? It uh, seems to have a lot of people. We got a lot of enthusiasm. Pine Bluff really coming out. How do you feel about that? I think the city has done a fantastic job. The people in the town um, have all come out to the ballpark each night. The state of Arkansas has been very gracious to us. 
and we're excited to be here. Well, we have an added added attraction with George Foster being a manager out here. What has he added to the Babe Ruth uh, organization? Well, George, obviously, is such a pro. Um, he's adding a lot to the uh, excitement to the players, and, and they just be able to uh, to be with George Foster and his players and really respect him. It's good. Is it a good possibility that we'll be right back here in Pine Bluff? What are the future plans that we have here? Well, it looks good. You know, I think uh, amateur all-star baseball is pleased with what we, we've seen here in the, the city and the state. And it looks pretty good. Well, that's great. Mostly we're getting great sportsmanship, folks, Steve and Bob. And I tell you, guys are really hitting the ball. Sarge, thanks. And, of course, uh, AABI incorporates 15,000 leagues, kids 8 to 18, over 102,000 teams. That's 1.8 million players. Wow. Quite a pool to choose from. Dennis Bruno leading it off for Babe Ruth as we move to the third, and this one's fouled away. One ball and one strike. The three, four, five hitters up here for Babe Ruth in this third inning. Mr. Bruno walked his first time, stranded at third. In fact, Babe Ruth had two runs in that first inning and had the bases loaded, but the man on the mound, Steve Best, came back, struck out Prather, and got Zabladil in a pop-up, and that was the end of that threat. Then Best really turned it around on that second inning, Steve, in the first inning. Best labored through 36 pitches, but then came right back in the second through eight and uh, seemingly is back on track. He's gotten very comfortable on this mound. His high fastball has been very, very effective. He used his change up, spotted it well. Over the mound, charging is Joseph. Can he get in at first? No. Dennis Berto with the infield hit to lead off the third inning. Kevin Joseph knew he was going to have a hard time to throw him out at first base. Joseph charged this ball well, took it on the last short hop, but he's a tall shortstop. Just couldn't get the ball away soon enough. Nice try. So Bruno is aboard for the second time today, and the catcher, Chad Suter, is up. RBI and an infield ground out his first time. an opening strike. Bruce is here in the Pine Bluff this week watching his son play. So one of the many former big leaguers that we have in attendance here this week. Nice to see him too. Always a fine gentleman. Looks in very good shape. You know, they, we, we've talked before, especially at the College World Series, about the number of fathers and sons that uh, are in the college ranks and had dads in Major League Baseball, and now Major League dads and Major League sons, all out of the boom thing. Oh, and two. Well, across the country, I think June uh, 18th is usually Father's Day. That was the date this year. But it seems like now in baseball, every day is Father's Day. All the kids are out there. And Griffey's are a great example. The Bonds. I only also, have about 16 years to wait. <laughs> yeah. Their five daughters. Uh, oh, we saw Steve <laughs> Little Trout. Ryan. We saw Steve Trout uh, on the home run derby a minute ago. He's been with us this week. And, of course, he and, and Dizzy forming the all-time winningest uh, father-son pitching combination. That's so, a lot of baseball uh, history being made with the fathers and their sons. One ball and two strikes on Chad Suter. We talk about guys that are still getting it done. How about Lee Smith? Isn't that yeah. amazing? He can still go out there and still get those uh, saves. Seems like only, leader. only yesterday he hit my bat in that playoff game, Padres and the Cubs, and sliced one over the wall. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell people. I, I didn't do anything. It's yes, all the 100 bat. mile an hour fastball <laughs> and the ricochet. Did it. <laughs> but Lee, uh, obviously the all time save leader, I believe. Yes, he is. 452 saves. And going. And still picking them up. And aren't the California Angels playing great baseball? We saw them last night on ESPN uh, losing to Kansas City. Uh, they're having a marvelous year under Mr. Latchman. One ball and two strikes. The Suter's fouled off three here to stay alive. Steve Betts was with a good change up that time. Got it up a little bit. Heading the count. Two strikes. One ball. That's a couple of pitches to, to work with here. Catcher sets up outside. Looks like a curveball slider. Up. Oh. Got him swinging. Throws him with a high heat right down 
The old Powder River, as you said, right? So, one away here as Chad Suter strikes out. There's his dad, Bruce, number six on the all-time save list. Two guys, of course, still rolling. Lee Smith at the top of the heap, and there's Eck at 307. This is through last night. None of these guys gave you any difficulty, though, did they, Steve? <laughs> That's right. I'd say they were all tough. Obviously, eighth and ninth inning, these guys were the best in the trade, and you knew that every time you walked out there, it was going to be a real battle. Each one of them kind of scowled a little bit. Bruce didn't scowl so much and Lee, but those other guys, Gossage in those World Series, it was me. Runner moving, and the pitch by Don Ross lifted behind the mound. Third baseman Guzman will take charge and put it away for out number two. Example of the leadership of Guzman that time. Waved off the second baseman, said, I got it, planted it, took it nice and easy. Jonathan Weisbrick, the DH, coming up next as you take a look at Mr. Guzman over there at third base. Two gone in the inning. Babe Ruth leading. 2 nothing. All the scoring confined to the top of the first as Weisbrick, the DH, walked his first time, steps in. Bruno at first base is a, kind of an interesting story here because this is really the first baseball he has played in the county year of 1995. Five strike takes a strike. Bruno was redshirted at Wilmington College this spring, so he hasn't played any baseball since his high school season in the spring of 94 in Millville, New Jersey. Wow. So he, he felt like we were talking to him on the field yesterday, so this is like spring training for me. <laughs> What a time to uh, to try to get your balance and your timing. Really? And he's doing a great job so far. Batting third. 0-1 on Bystrick with two gone here in the third inning. A little bit of a change up that time inside. And we talked about the size of this kid. Best 6'4", 205. And working with Mark Davis here behind the plate today. Really establishing a good rhythm here the last couple of innings. Davis really hides the sign, almost hiding it from the pitcher that time. He wiggles the fingers, looks like a breaking ball. Yep, good slider away, out of the strike zone. Two and one. Sometimes you can get your signs too tight in there, especially in a night game, and the pitcher will have a tough time seeing it. You can overhide it sometimes. And then you call for the curve and get the heater. That's right. <laughs> Off the face mask. <laughs> I've seen that happen. Or, as a catcher, you miss it completely and it hits the umpire, and the umpire is really mad at Ooh. you. Balls and a strike got by strike. And the throw down to second is not in time, and Bruno has the stolen base. Bruno stealing off the pitcher that time, and a little bit of difficulty for Davis getting the ball out of the catcher's mitt, but still he stole that ball. Let's watch him. He really has a good first step, even looking back and easily gets in the second base. Nice hit for a slide. He's done that before. So two gone and three and one the count on Bystrick with a man now in scoring position. And that fills the count at three and two. Let's see what Best comes back with here. He's been very successful with the high fastball, getting these pitchers, uh, hitters rather to jump all over. Let's see what he feeds Mr. Bystrick. Well, I bet on another one. A three and two count. He's had success at it. Catcher sets up right down the chute. Yes. Got him. The fifth strikeout and the fourth in the last two innings for Steve Bess. And it remains a 2-0 lead for Babe Ruth as we move to the bottom of the third. We are back and the Downers Printing Card folks are doing a nice thing here in Pine Bluff. They have a booth here on the concourse. And you see, the fans could come by. You could put on the jersey top of your favorite club and then have your own Donruss baseball card made right here on the spot. And there's the finished product. Oh my God. Looking pretty good. No, I, I thought that was a good-looking card. 
One of the many uh, features that they have going here around the, the tournament, this uh, NAABT affair here in Pine Bluff, and it's been a lot of fun here this week. Great folks here in Pine Bluff. And, and when you get right down to it, Steve, it's the folks of this uh, fine town here in southeastern Arkansas that really make it happen, make the event a very special one for the players. Well, you're always only as good as your volunteerism and support by the local town and, and the local sports fans and baseball fans here. And, of course, you're... Your sponsors are so very, very important because they provide the, the equipment and the, the goods and the services and the dollars to bring these young men in from all over the country. A ball and two strikes. AABI has put together a great team of sponsors, which we'll talk to you about as the, the game goes along. A ball and two strikes. Uh, the leadoff man, Mark Davis, the catcher here for Double ABC, young man from the Nashville area, Franklin, Tennessee. David Lipscomb, collegiate product, in fact, a teammate of Bess. And they're working uh, together today after working together in the college year. 18 years old, 6 feet 195 pounds. And on the ground a second, Abernathy, one away. Taylor Field here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and a symmetrical layout here, 315 down the lines, 360 in the gaps, and 404 to straightaway center field. This uh, field, named after a gentleman named Pinchback Taylor, who died in the 40s, back in the 20s, he gave the land to the city to build a ballpark, and at one time, the Cardinals had a Class D team here in Pine Bluff. Of course, this is a big Cardinal territory. This is a neck of the woods down here. And the park was built actually as a WPA project. And it's a quaint little ballpark and, and a very fair dimensions here for these All-Stars. Up the middle and through, and Brian Weiss has a base hit. Good shot by Brian Weiss. And a rocket up the middle that time. Didn't wait. Took that first pitch and slashed it up. So Weiss is aboard. That is the second base hit for Double ABC today. And the center fielder Jeremy Dodson walked his first time. Coming up next. One away. Double ABC is trailing by a score of two to nothing. And you talked about Bob Stephen Best throwing 36 pitches that first inning, of course, getting behind two to nothing. But since then, has been very, very effective with just about five or six strikeouts. So this double ABC team is definitely in the game and missed the bottom of the third inning with one out to runner on first base and some pretty good hitters coming up. Yes, the aforementioned Mr. Guzman. He's waiting in the up deck circle. Well, he swung at a high fastball last time. He's got to be a little more patient. He'll he'll make him bring that ball down this time. And that'll keep Bryant Weiss close at first base. There is the opposing figure, <laughs> Mr. Now, Guzman. Now see how deck. he warms up there? Swings down. That's a that's the way that I really advocate, and I teach the kids to warm up in the on deck circle. The more you swing down like that, by the time you get to the, the batter's box and with the ball coming in at a slight angle from the pitcher, the more level you'll be and be able to make good solid line drive contact. And I like the, the uh, swing of the two bats in the out deck circle rather than the donut. Sure. Well, you don't see that very often. Well, you get a feel for it. You get a feel for the length of the bat and the weight distribution. Bruno makes the play at shortstop, two gone. So Brian Weiss remains at first base, and now the third baseman, Guzman, is coming up. We talk about an island that, that loves their baseball, or Puerto Rico. It is all day, every day, 365 days a year. And this young man from Bayamon, Eduardo Guzman. You know, he looks like a hitter. He's got those two batting gloves, rolling gloves, and that Louisville slugger and wristbands. And They're going to send Weiss. The pitch is a strike. The tag safe. What a good throw that time from Suter. But as is often the case, Weiss got a tremendous jump on the pitcher. Suter got rid of it very quickly, threw a strike down there, but, but Weiss with good speed. Watch him. Gets rid of it very quick. Throws it right on target. See how a little bit of a hook slide away from the tag that time? Good baseball instincts. All in one on Guzman. Two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. 
And the breaking ball is hammered deep to right center. Pray they're going back, way back, and she is gone. This game is tied at two. Eduardo Guzman with his fourth home run of the tournament. In our pregame, we told you about the two men to watch, Abernathy and Guzman, both of them with home runs. Guzman just hit that one, stopped, took a look at it, walked about 30 or 40 feet, and then went into his patented home run trot. And home run trot, Steve's getting slower as the week progresses. That's right. <laughs> Why are you trying to get the most out of the week? You know? <laughs> especially on, on TV, especially on TV. Here's the tail end of that uh, blast by Guzman. And boy, did he hit it a ton. Two-run home run ties it up at two, and now pitcher Stephen Bess is at the plate. Well, I think we both knew, as well as the fans and everybody here, that that ball was gone once he made contact. It's just a matter of how far it was going to go. And this one to right, sinking fast, but Prather comes in to make the catch. That will retire the side, but Mr. Guzman, with his fourth home run in three days, ties it up at two. New ball game as we move to the top of the fourth. The Babe Ruth All Stars 2 2 with double ABC. Let's go down to the field once again and check in with Gary Matthews. Hi, Bob. Thanks a lot. We have Bill Smith here, who is the chairman of uh, Babe Ruth. How are your kids liking it, and what does the tournament mean to your particular program? Well, this means everything, Gary. It's a showpiece for Babe Ruth baseball, and we're just so proud to be here, and the young, young men playing here today are, are talking about how great uh, hospitality they're having here, that Eddie Bryan and Jim Hill and all the group here is, uh, seem to it that this is a fine showpiece, and they, they've done a magnificent job here in Pine Bluff. So are you able to pick kids from all over the country, and if kids want to get involved with your program what would be the best way to go about doing that well we mail out to we mail out to every every league that we have a farm for them to send in and they nominate and we have 13 states and fr from uh, british columbia canada in here on our team so we ha we're well represented across the united states and canada well that's great you guys are one and one and looks like everybody both you guys need this ball game looks like to get into the championship so we need good luck work. to you we, ne we need it worse gary <laughs> okay and i'd like to say hello back to the group back at headquarters because we, uh, Rosemary Shelkoff and Robert Faraday back there, are, they're not working today. They're just watching this ball game. And Ron, I want to tell them that Ron Tellis and our president CEO will be there soon. So get off the television and get back to work. Okay, thanks a lot. Back up to you, Steve. Bob. Okay, thanks, Sarge. Scott Prather is the leadoff man here for Babe Ruth in the fourth inning. Scott's been busy today. He's had some balls hit to him out there, made a couple of nice catches. Had one scream on by him, but he played well off the wall. And then he saw Guzman's ball, more of a, of a satellite going over. And a swing and a miss for strike three. So Stephen Bass, who yielded the two runs in the first, has really settled into a great group now. Six strikeouts and five of them in the last two and one third innings. The center fielder, Danny Zabladil, is up next. Popped up to the third baseman his first time. And up the middle, shortstop Kevin Joseph behind the bat. Two gone. Todd Thompson will be next. Nice play by Joseph. And Bob, let me compliment the grounds crew here at Taylor Field. They've done a great job of fixing this field up for this tournament. And I don't think we've seen a bad hop yet. The ball has bounced truly, and the young infielders have done a good job. All in one. There's a look at the, the field here. And uh, you see out there by the scoreboard in left field, there's a a banner there for the signboard home of the fighting zebras. Here's a fly ball to deep left. This one is going to bend and go foul. But the uh, high school team here is also very good. 
Here's what we've seen this week in terms of the standings. It's a double, it's a round robin affair, so everybody plays the other five clubs once. The top two teams go to the finals on Saturday. One unbeaten team at 2 0. And you see Babe Ruth and Double ABC both at 1 and 1 so far. So it's a big game. You don't want to lose that second one. Really puts the pressure on. Try to get into that championship game. There's a strikeout of Thompson. Seven Ks for Steve Bess and a 1 2 3 inning in the fourth. Still 2 2. Totino's National Amateur All-Star Baseball Tournament from Taylor Field in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The round robin week's play continues, steaming toward the championship game on Saturday afternoon. I'm Bob Rathman along with Steve Garvey. Gary Matthews is with us down on the field. It's a 2-2 ball game as we move to the bottom of the fourth here at AABC, the American Amateur Baseball Congress. Their all-stars coming up with right fielder Cash Riley, second baseman Jason Shelley, first baseman Denny New to bat against left-hander Brad Wilkerson for the Babe Ruth All-Stars. Cash Riley out of Irving, Texas. He has signed to play his college baseball at Arizona State. 0 for 1 today. And takes a pitch outside for ball one. Arizona State, a great program. National champions several times through the years. Lake Jim Brockett, super job of that uh, program through the years. So many great major leaguers. And a team that was uh, not invited to, to the NCAAs this year. A real shocker. One of the rare years that neither Arizona State or Arizona right. made it. There's a strike. One and two. They'll be back. And I'm quite sure Cash is going to be one of the big reasons. Let's focus in on Chad Suter here. See what he's got up his sleeve. Suter gives that fastball, then uh, a little two there. Sets up on the outside part of the plate with a slider. No swing on appeal to the first base umpire. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's interesting. They tell the story of the, you know, the first base coach and the third base coach trying to pick up the sign sometimes, trying to, try to see if the catcher opens up a leg here or there. And uh, they tell the story about the catcher who, for the changeup, which means four fingers and wiggle it, they'd see the muscles in the forearm moving, and they could determine when the changeup was. If he just put a finger or two down, you know, the muscles wouldn't move. But if he took the four fingers and wiggle them, the forearm muscles would move, and they always knew when the changeup was. See? So that's, that's the sophistication of coaching, not just giving signs and waving the runners around, but trying to pick up sides. Three balls, two strikes on Cash Riley. For the catcher who put his signs down too low, and the first base coach could see them below the lake. <laughs> Wonder why they were getting every pitch. Did you want to know if, if they had? Here's strike three. If they had the signs, oh, I, did you want to know what was coming? I wanted to know. Uh, I want to know fastball. Let's take a look at this again. He rears back. Goes a good tight slider. See, he starts that slider on outside of the plate, and it breaks back on the outside corner against the right-handed hitters. That's why it's very, very effective. Yeah, because tell me fastball, but don't tell me breaking ball and make a mistake, because if I'm looking breaking ball, I can't adjust to that fastball. Right. But if I'm looking fastball, I can adjust to the breaking ball. I've seen some guys stay in there and take them right off the helmet <laughs> looking for that breaking ball. One and nothing on Jason Shelley, young man from Plainfield, Illinois. And some pop in that bat. Hit eight home runs in high school this past spring. Good, good wrist action. Bounces one to third. Todd Thompson. And across to Don Ross. Two up and two down. Sunday night baseball coming up, and we've got a dandy, a rivalry that Steve and Gary are very familiar with. The Giants and the Dodgers from Chavez Ravine at 756 Eastern, 456 Pacific. Mr. Bonds took an over last night against Mr. Bondesi. Last year's National League Rookie of the Year, red hot again. We'll see it Sunday, the Giants and the
the Dodgers from Los Angeles. They start their four game series tonight. Gentlemen, I've got to ask you, you know, Gary, when you started your career coming up with San Francisco, you were right in the middle of some of those great giant Dodger games. I got to tell you, that rivalry actually starts in the minor leagues, and I'm sure Steve will tell you. Sure. If you were losing, had a losing season, the one team you wanted to beat was the Dodger Blue. And I tell you, it, uh, it's, it's just embedded in you throughout your, uh, throughout your career. Ever starts those battles of candlestick and the fog and mist, and you'd get up there and hit that ball to right center and beat us and <laughs> hey, uh, try to trip you up going around first, but nah. That's where I got that bad reputation that I couldn't feel with that wind blowing in the outfield. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hey, there were nights when the fog had come in, a pop up in the infield, and you'd lose it. Nobody would see it. Oh, you'd no, cover your head, right? You saw it a lot. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And if you heard it land, you knew you were too close to it. Oh, boy, I tell you, those were, those were the good old days. I tell you, real cold. Man. Candlestick so Park is the only park in America where you freeze during baseball season and burn up during football season. It's real. Oh. We get to November and everybody's enjoying the sunshine, nice weather. <laughs> Their promotion was ski park a night in June. <laughs> it really was chilly there, but uh, I, as a hitter, I really didn't think you had the advantage, even if you played there, because it was cold for both guys. And let's face it, hitters like to hit when it's hot. Was there one game or an event, either of you, that a, a giant Dodger game that uh, comes to mind? Did you think? Uh, is of course, Steve had many more than you, Gary, but. Well, I mean, for me, being uh, growing up in Los Angeles and uh, in 73, I, I end up hitting my first grand slam that sticks out most in my mind in uh, Dodger Stadium. And as a kid, being able to go to the stadium, go to the stadium and uh, um, see such great players, uh, Jim Gilliam and Sandy Koufax, it was pretty boring in those days because <laughs> there was never any hits. But, uh, it's always a great stadium, one of my favorite ballparks in this day. We're at the end of four and a 2-2 ball game. We'll be right back. At the end of four, a 2-2 ball game. From Pine Bluff, Arkansas, the Babe Ruth All-Stars two, the ABC Stars also with two, and these two pitchers really get in a good group now. Stephen Bess on the mound for double ABC, getting ready to hit the top of the lineup card here for Babe Ruth. And Brad Wilkerson on the mound uh, for the Babe Ruth team in their line, Steve, very similar here. You see Bess, though, has picked up seven strikeouts, and six of them have come in the last three innings. Well, that's the difference in the two pitchers. Wilkerson keeps the ball down, gets the ground balls. Bess throws that rising fastball, and the guys just can't get up to it. So Wilkerson uh, has him hitting into the ground. Bess has him swinging and missing. Brent Abernathy, the second baseman from Marietta, Georgia, leading it off here for the Babe Ruth Stars. This was his first swing of the day, and it was a home run to left center. His second home run of the tournament. He also hit one on Tuesday. And this young man having a whale of a tournament, both with the glove and the bat, leading it off here in the fifth inning. Shows bunt and takes a strike. You know, he was, uh, I used to do that a lot, too. You know, you think you're going to hit the ball, so they play back, and you drop one down, you got the third baseman back, and it works well. But that time, he almost squared up. You really have to drop the bat down and, and drag it down the third base line. See, now the other benefit of doing that is you've got the third baseman conscious. Now Guzman is even with the bag, if not in closer to home plate, so the reaction time goes down. So Abernathy's thinking of the plate. There's a good example there of Goose. He starts to ease back now. He's saying, hey, he might now, eh, well, maybe he might. I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's a game you play. You know, you see if the hitter's looking at you. Right off the end of the bat, roller to do at first base. Can he beat him to the bag? Yes. So Abernathy is out, three on assistant. New did, New did a very good job that time of taking the ball himself and showed his dexterity by getting the bag and beating Abernathy. Abernathy dives, stays safe on the outside, and well, see, he ended up taking the, taking the back half of the bag where New tags the front half. So good as, play, as, good effort. As valuable as those hands are, I'm not sure I'd like to no. put them down there around the bag where some 200-pound first baseman could do a tap dance on them. Well, you know my philosophy in sliding in the first. You have to slow up in order to slide. So anybody that ever slides in the first base, unless 
the throw takes the first baseman off and you have to dive around is really slowing himself down. But you do see it at this level. You see it at college a little bit. Very rarely do you see it in the pros or major leagues. Andrew Lynch at the plate. He counts one ball and one strike. And you're right, too, Bob. Sliding head first is, is pretty dangerous because you, you see a lot of broken fingers, wrists, and shoulders. Where the fielders end up with knees on the shoulder, you get a separation. And it's just not a wise thing to do. I asked Ricky Henderson. He stole his 1,000th base in Detroit two, three years ago. And I asked him on the radio show, I said, what hurts more, your legs or your hands? And he said, my hands by far. And he has no chest hair anymore. That's, uh, <laughs> that's another. That's one of the detriments, you know? For those single guys, you know? It uh, <laughs> takes its toll. Sure, yeah. Two and two on Andrew Lynch. It reminds me, I made a speech the other day, and I was telling about I, I win the first base, third base job for the Dodgers in 70, and, and two days before the opening game, I get a call to do a Vitalis commercial. Strike three. Good pitch. And it's got Pete Rose in it, and myself, and Harry Wendelstead, and Maury Wills. Well, I'm the rookie leading off of first. I slide head first in the second. My helmet comes off. Pete Rose tags me. Harry Wendell says, Wendelstead says, you're safe. And Pete says, well, Harry, look at the grease on the glove. So Harry comes over, touches my hair, and says, kid, you're out of here. I walk to the dugout, and there's Maury Wills holding Vitalis. Kid, if you're going to make it in the major leagues, you got to use the greaseless groom. <laughs> Are they one of our sponsors, too? By uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> you know things pop into your mind when you're 46. <laughs> but it's not where it starts from here. It's where it gets into position. See, he starts to flatten it in the hitting position. Remember Carl Yastrzemski used to have that bat oh, yeah. straight up and way over his head. And people, are, how can he hit that way? But as the pitcher started to release the ball, he would bring it down and lock it right into a good hitting position. Let's see what he does with the bat. See, he flattens it and it's a shot. Just past Abernathy and into right. Well, Brunchman catching everything at second. I thought he might get a glove on that one, too, but skipped right past him and back to back singles here for Weiss and Dodson. Upright hitter. Really starts to crunch now and it gets the bat in the hitting position like he said. Look how he stays back, accelerates through the ball, and hooks it right by the second baseman. Good job of hitting. Now, Eduardo Guzman. The game double ABC, it's two runs in the third with a two-run home run to right and a ball that he absolutely crushed. He's coming up now to face Abernathy, uh, Wilkerson again, rather, with Weiss at second and Dodson at first base and one away in a 2-2 game. Wilkerson starts him out with a good pitch. Now, you're going to want to pitch him away because any ball inside, he's going to get that aluminum bat on it and really ricochet it to right field, right center, and even center field is accessible to Eduardo. See where the catcher sits up. Tailing fastball inside. Fouls it away. You know, coming into this game this morning, Steve, I was thinking if, you know, you're the opposition, how do you, might you work Guzman? And you say, well, you know, they've got a left-hander going today. Maybe that will neutralize a little bit of his power. Uh-uh. Now, very good left-handed hitters hit left-handed pitchers. That's why they're very good, because they stay in there. Double ABC with Brian Weiss at second. Jeremy Dodson at first, threatening to break this 2-2 deadlock. It's the first. Basket grab by Ross for one, and that's all. That pitch got in on him that time. Good job by Wilkerson. Not letting... Guzman extend his arms like he did on the home run. Bill Weiss and Dodson move up 90 feet. Let's take a look at the swing here. Good. Does you see how he had to bring his hands in and get the head of the bat inside and couldn't quite get them extended. Good job of pitching that time. Steve Best with a chance to help his own cause. The lead run 90 feet away at third base. Bottom of the fifth inning. And to center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit. They're going to give Dodson the green light. Here comes the throw from center, not in time. Four to two, double ABC leading. Stephen Bass hitting and pitching now. Nice single to center. 
Let's take a look at this swing. Nice stride. Good swing. Accelerates through the ball. Just kind of hits it in the right spot in center now. This is going to be a little closer than I thought. A throw that comes all the way almost in the air to home plate. Good job of sliding around. And he's safe, making it 4-2, to two, double ABC. Daz Riley, the right fielder, is 0 for 2 today with a bounce out and a strikeout. Cash has taken some good cuts in this game. You can see why he's going to Arizona State University, which is a great baseball school, a very offensive-minded school. So Cash is going to be a big man with a big stick for him. Played for Coach Adair in high school and was the all-time home run hitting uh, leader at Trinity Christian Academy down in Texas. Six feet tall, 175 pounds. Hit 14 home runs this spring. Like I said, you can really see the guys that can hit. They got two new white gloves on, big rolling gloves and <laughs> wristbands and brand new TPX Louisville Slugger and boy, they're ready. not swing with aluminum in your amateur career, did you? You're still on the wood. No, only, uh, yeah, that's, that's how far back that went. Thanks, oh, partner. Yeah. <laughs> the only time I ever used aluminum was in the batting cages in spring training to save the bats and my hands a little bit. What uh, did you think of the bats? Uh, well, they were just the first prototypes. And, heavy. Yeah, you know, they were they were heavy, and I mean, they were industrial strength bats. <laughs> yeah. These bats are, are titanium oh, and this Kevlar and... You know, you look at a 35-inch, 29-ounce, you can generate great bat speed. Cash Riley strikes out. That's the third K for Brad Wilkerson. But Double ABC comes up with two on the single to center by Bess, and they take the two-run lead. BT rolls on from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And we've got a 4-2 ball game with Double ABC leading now as we move to the top half of the sixth inning. Babe Ruth trailing for the first time in this game. They will send up their first baseman, Don Ross, to lead things off against Steve Best, who helped his own cause with a two-run single to center to send Double ABC into the lead. Now Ross will lead it off from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. These folks made the trip down here to Arkansas to watch him play this week. 0 for 1, hit with the pitches first time. Off speed breaking ball is fouled away. I always thought you ought to get a hit when you are hit, don't you think? I mean, the pain is yes. involved. Absolutely. Now, Ross didn't uh, suffer too much <laughs> back in the first inning, but your point is well taken. But you never know another man's pain, you know? <laughs> That's right. Walk a mile in his body. <laughs> nice breaking ball. It's 0 and 2. Steve Bess really mixing his pitches up very, very well. Best pitches, the rising fastball and a good change-up curve. Ball and two strikes. Five, six, seven hitters here for the Babe Ruth Stars in the sixth inning. A little bit of a change-up that time, but a 59-foot change-up, as they say. You gotta be careful when you're a fastball pitcher that you don't telegraph your changeup by really gearing down in your delivery. It has to be the same delivery and the same arm speed. And strike three call. Nine strikeouts now for Betts. Let's go down to Gary Matthews. Sarge? Hey, Bob, Steve. Listen, I found the coolest spot in town right now. Here at the Cool Zone. Got all of my friends here. We're enjoying the game. I hope you're staying cool the way we are. What do you think, guys? Is this cool here? Yeah! All right, all right. Back up to you, Bob, Steve. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gary. He may not get out of there. He I, may have all no, the interviews right there the rest of the said, day. Come on over to my office. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This is the pitcher Wilkerson is going to bat. They're going to take the D.H. Weisberg out of the game. One gone and one away. Well, I'm pretty sure Brad can swing the bat pretty well, too. It looks like he's two for three, 667. 
Boy, what tremendous hitter in high school, Steve. His average this spring at Apollo High in Owensboro, Kentucky, 570 with four home runs and 53 runs batted in. Also plays the outfield, some first base in addition to his mound duties. Two and one. Huh? He didn't miss his pitch very often. I don't think I could hit 570 off a tee. <laughs> now he sets up very well at the plate. He approaches the ball nicely. Very aggressive as a hitter. And there's the skipper. George Foster. Skipper has a lot of signs, doesn't he? he just, <laughs> yeah, it's he one just... clap and points towards the, <laughs> the right. wall. Hit it hard. <laughs> That's right. You want to complicate things in this series. Yeah, Foster, we talked about it all his home runs, you know, hitting 52, one of the MVP, et cetera. But here's a guy. He had 79 lifetime home runs in over 2,000 at bats. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, in 1977, hits 52 right. in one year. And there. You know, a guy who labored in the minor leagues a long time before he got his opportunity. Made one little adjustment, opened up a little bit, and he just started pounding. So Wilkerson gets the walk, and we'd like to remind you, friends, tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Time, NASCAR Super Truck Series continues on ESPN with the Pizza Plus 100 live from Bristol, Tennessee. Trucks are full-sized American Bay pickups and modified for racing. We'll see Kenny Schrader and Daryl Waltrip and Jeff Bodine and the boys tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Coming up to pinch hit is Jeff Parsons. Pinch hitting here for Crater. Let me see what he's done uh, so far here in the tournament. Parsons is from Hendersonville, Tennessee, the Nashville area that's produced so many fine players for our tournament. Back. Ooh, that was his pitch that time. Belt high, inside half of the plate. He knows he's missed it. When a guy walks out of the batter's box quickly, that's always a sign that he knew he missed it. And, oh, gosh. He's trying to regroup now. Jeff Parsons played at Hendersonville High School in Tennessee. Hit 420 this spring, and as a pitcher was 12-3. Two for six of the tournament. Two and one. A warm summer's Thursday afternoon in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. We're watching the best amateur players in the country, 16 to 18. This round robin tournament continues. There's four games uh, every day here. Play down to the two top clubs for the championship on Saturday. Right now, the NABF team is leading the way, 2-0. This is a key game for both Babe Ruth and AABC. They're both sitting at 1-1. One one. It's interesting, too, Bob, over the last three years, the size of these young men continues to, to not only get taller, but bigger. So it's a, kind of a statement. I, I remember being this age. Uh, very rarely do we have a guy over six foot or six one, and we probably have at least 12, 15 young men or six one, six two at least. We have one out. Wilkerson at first base. Four to two, double ABC leading. Now conference time as Parsons goes down to have a couple of words with Mr. George Foster. I bet he's telling him, you know what? You're pulling out a little bit with your stride. That front foot's opening up. And when that front foot opens, that shoulder opens up. So square up a little bit and think in terms of hitting that ball up the middle. You think so? I think so. I think he said, just do like I did, hit it out of the ballpark. Don't worry about it. He may have said that, too. <laughs> From our center field <laughs> camera. Let's take a look. We can't see the sign too well. Last sign looked like a fastball. Looked like he's pointing inside. That fills it at three balls and two strikes. Now, it looks like it was over the plate that time, but we're, if you'll notice, at a slight angle more towards left center. 
Rose. So the ball sometimes, although it looks like it's over the plate, that time was probably outside by a couple inches. And from our vantage point behind home plate, it looked like it just missed. Will the runner be going? One out. Full count. Would you send him down by two runs? I don't Time's think up. so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't manage. Uh, Got to be aggressive in these games, though. That's the key. Who's going to be bold for? See, I never boldly <laughs> said that he should, he was going to be off and running. <laughs> Coming up next is the center fielder, Danny Zabladil. Right now, Mr. Atkins is going to take time to talk it over with Steve Bess out there. Kid who the, was really rolling here. Picked up uh, that strikeout of Ross to start the inning, which was his ninth of the game. And he's been untouched practically since the first inning when Babe Ruth scored a couple of runs. But now the two pinch hitters, Wilkerson and Parsons, have walked back to back. And we're going to get some activity down in the bullpen, it appears. Danny Zabladil is the hitter for Babe Ruth. Right now, George is checking that lineup card. Well, nobody was rushing down to the bullpen, so I think they still have confidence in Steve Best. <laughs> Randall Biggs is one of the pitchers, number 27, headed down to the uh, bullpen. There's Randall. Very polite young man, holds the door for his teammates. We know these brunch games are a little more casual than the ones <laughs> later on. And the crowds, too. The, we've had great crowds here at Taylor Field in Pine Bluff. The community has really turned out. Obviously, the 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock games uh, aren't as, as large a crowd, but the real baseball fans have come out. But then the 2, 5, and 8 o'clock games are usually sold out. One ball, no strikes. Uh, Danny, 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a bounce-up. Four to two. This Babe Ruth club is trailing as they bat in the sixth inning. One and one. Babe Ruth hasn't been able to put a run on the board for skipper Foster since the first inning. Abernathy homered. Later Lynch came around to score on an infield out. That's been it. Steve Bess has struck out nine. Got two men on, though, behind him as he feeds 1-1 to Zabladil, who squared around the box. But with Bess stepping off, we'll see if uh, that strategy continues. And Bob, that was a 36-pitch first inning for Steve Bess, and he's really settled down for nine strikeouts over the next four innings. A little bit low, 2-1. In and squints a little bit and says, Really? I thought that was a strike. Danny Zabladil at the plate out of Newark Catholic. You see the runners with Wilkerson at second, Parsons at first base. Runners moving and the pitch is fouled off. Well, they had him going on the two and one. And George likes to get him moving, especially the second half of a game. He likes to let his players take their cuts, but in a close game like this, he needs, needs some runners moving. He wants to make things happen. Let's see if I can pick up those signs. Hatch usually uh, run. Let's see. Chest is uh, take. Pants are uh, fine. Well, he did all three. I think he's got him swinging away. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Ten strikeout for Steve Bitts. Two gone. Big strikeout right there. Got him with a changeup. Steve Bess, three pitches so far this game. Fastball curve and that, a three-finger changeup. Little circle change. And get some swinging for strike three and two away. So if Babe Ruth is to do any damage here in the sixth inning, it's up to this man at the plate, Todd Thompson. Had a couple of hits in the first game against Pine Bluff, but nothing since. He struck out twice today. Todd 
Scott is still considering his college options. This young man from Trail, British Columbia. Thinking uh, seriously about Stetson, Mississippi Gulf Coast, uh, junior college. Runner, there's a quick break at the lead runner, Wilkerson, but now Best does the smart thing and steps off. Runner has a big lead at second base. When you're down, your, your second base runner always seems to take a little bigger lead because he wants to score. He's very anxious to score. Now, if these youngsters that played together, they'd have a pickoff on and they have a good chance to get it. Don't make that last out of third base. No, don't make that last out of third. Which, as a matter of fact, I remember one time playing at Riverfront Stadium. A guy on second and third, and I hit a ball down the line, and a guy by the name of Foster is playing left field, and I'm chugging around second, and he's just picking up the ball, and I think, oh, boy, I'm going to go in there standing up. He threw me out by 10 feet. The ball's waiting for you. Oh, yeah, waiting for me. <laughs> it's like you want to call time. <laughs> Find the nearest hole. Right. He had, he had a much better arm than people remember or give him credit for. Here's our situation. First and second, two and one on Thompson. And there's that pickoff play, and Wilkerson dives back. Two and one on Thompson. Boy, what a big uh, plus it would be for Babe Ruth if Thompson could get aboard and give Abernathy a chance to bat here. And the runner's moving, and Wilkerson is safe at third. So the double steal. Wilkerson comes to third, and Parsons goes to second. Well, George Foster wanted to get two runners in scoring position, <laughs> sends his runners on a two-ball and one-strike count with two outs, and it pays off. Take a look at this pitch down, tough for the catcher to, to backhand it and throw, and a good slide beats the tag. Now it's a hitter situation, three and one. Todd Thompson, runners in scoring position. Single should score both runners. Strike call. Thompson has to come back at three and two. And this may very well be the ball game right here. It's a seven inning game, don't forget. So we're in the sixth. It's a two run game. If he can get Thompson and not have to worry about Abernathy until the next inning. Well, that'd be a big plus. Well, he's struck out about seven guys on fastballs up, so why change now? And he's already got Thompson twice. I wish Thompson was fouled away. That went in on his fists, and it's three, still three and two. Yeah, that was a tough pitch. He really was protecting himself more than anything else. Second and third lead with two outs. Popped him up. Behind the plate, Davis trying to find it, now does. Drips back and can't make the catch. New life for Todd Thompson at the plate. That'll be an error on Mark Davis to keep the inning alive. Looked like trouble all the way that time. Sun right over home plate. Very difficult to see. As you see, he drifts. Gets in the top part of the mitt and just bounces out. A frustrated young man, but he'll catch most of them from now on. See how you got to drift backwards? He's looking right into the sun. It's a physical error, but that's, uh, let's blame the sun for most of that. Strike three call. So Bess saws off the outside edge and keeps the lead at four to two, his 11th strikeout today. The Major League Scouts representing virtually all the clubs, plus the combine, watching these players here, the radar guns, the notebooks, the stopwatches. They've got all their all their work doing. They've been watching these guys here for a week. And uh, you might think, well, the draft was just a week ago. What are the two weeks ago? But uh, the scouts' work is never over. They're looking at kids for the draft the 1995 of 1995-96. Let's now go downstairs to Gary Matthews with one of those scouts. Gary? Thanks a lot there, Steve. I have Art uh, Gardner with me, who's with the Major League Baseball Scouting Bureau, and he's here looking at a lot of our players. Art, what are some of the things that you look for in a high school player, 16, 18 years old? 
Well, uh, we, Gary, look for the uh, the way a guy swings a bat and throw uh, the way his arm works. And uh, of course, we want a guy that can run. Uh, I've been real impressed with the pitches in this uh, this uh, tournament, and also the uh, the arm strength of the players around the infield and outfield. I mean, it's it's been impressive, and uh, those are the things you want in a, in a young player. How about this, Mr. Guzman? Has he impressed you here at this uh, at this tournament? Wow, Gary, he looks like uh, he looks like he's a little better 50 round pick, but uh, he's been the most impressive hitter in the, in the in the tournament. He's shown discipline at the plate, a good eye, and uh, when he's got his pitch, he's really hit it hard. Okay, well, thank you, Art. Right, back up to you, Stephen. Okay, thanks, Sarge. And well, they've had a lot to to look over here this week. And boy, some of these some of these kids, you could just tell, Steve, they're going to have a, a great uh, career. Possibly college baseball first, but for some of these kids, they're going to go right to the professional ranks. Bouncing ball at the middle and trouble. It's through as Abernathy and Bruno split out there, and the ball goes into center field. And Jason Shelley has a leadoff base hit. That's a situation where every hop was a good one until the last one, and it almost hit the bag and just bounced through the gloves. Why is it, Mr. Garvey, that the bad hop is always the last hop? Well, it's not a bad one. See, it just went through there. Both guys. I thought it was going to hit it. the bag. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you, if you're a shortstop or second baseman, have to anticipate that too. Be able to, if it hits the bag, a lot of times it will either bounce up higher or just stay flat. So, tough play. Denny New is scheduled to, to bat next. Steve Adair is out talking to the plate umpire, so let's see if they're going to make a change here. Ball club leading by a couple of runs as they bat at the bottom of the sixth inning. We should point out that uh, Babe Ruth will have the top of the lineup to bat in the seventh with Abernathy leading it off. Steve to keep this double A B C team from scoring any more runs. So we have a pinch hitter here Ben Menke from Scottsdale Arizona. He is going to pinch hit here 18 year old player going to Grand Canyon University Coronado High in Scottsdale. Opening strike for Brad Wilkerson. With nobody outs, Double ABC looking to get that runner over into scoring position. One ball, one strike. Wilkerson working the ball up and away, knowing that that's probably the most difficult position to bunt the ball. But Benke, with a good eye, lays off it. Belly flopping back in as Shelley at first base. Two balls and a strike. A two run home run by Eduardo Guzman. And the two-run single by Steve Bess. Place double ABC in the lead here. Here's the bunt, but hard back to the mound. They'll go to second to get the force. The return to first, not in time. Good pitch by Wilkerson that time. Threw the ball inside and a good, good tailing fastball inside, which made Menke really have to move his hands to watch his hands have to come in. See, and he bunts it instead of deadening it down the line. He gets it out in front of the pitcher's mound. Easy put out at second. Two late at first. Well, you want to try to keep it away from that pitcher. He's got the shortest throw on the diamond. Got to make the first baseman or third baseman field a sacrifice. Kevin Joseph, the shortstop. 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a line-out. Strike, and it's 0 and 1. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Foul back and Joseph at 0 2. Kevin played last spring at Rice in his freshman year. 
played uh, for Coach Steve Adair at Trinity Christian. Then on to Rice. He actually was the starting shortstop the first part of the season. Beat out a senior, Steve Brooks, and then Steve came on late. And really helped to uh, lead Rice to that NCAA tournament berth along with Jose Cruz Jr. Pretty exciting spring for Joseph. He drives one to deep center field. Back on the ball, Zabladil. He's at the track, and he makes the catch. Sprinting back to first, and without a throw, goes Ben Menke. So two gone as Joseph really tagged one. Kevin hit that ball square, and as you can see, got everything into it. Good head right on the ball. Drives the ball. Good backspin. Hits it about 395 to 400 feet. But to dead center. Little right, little left, and he has himself a two-run home run. Ben Menke at first base, and catcher Mark Davis to bat. One ball, no strikes. Four runs, seven hits for double ABC. Babe Ruth with two runs and three hits. Davis took a good cut at that ball off. Well. Wants to really get a couple more runs for his team. Put the game out of reach. Well, the old line. He unbuttoned his shirt with that swing. <laughs> yeah, there's the flap right there. He buttoned a couple of them with that. Back to the fastball. Wilkerson sets and delivers. Runner breaks and the pitch hit on the ground is short. Bruno has it. One hops it to first, but there to absorb it is Ross, and that'll do it in the sixth inning. No runs and a hit with no errors and one man left on base. The last chance for Babe Ruth, and they'll send their big man to lead it off when we come back. Four to two as we move to the final frame, the top of the seventh here in Pine Bluff. The new first baseman is Carlos Rivera for AABC. As we get set to watch Babe Ruth send up the one, two, three hitters, Brent Abernathy, and then it will be the left fielder, Larry Campion, and then shortstop Dennis Bruno to bat against Steve Bess. Bess has been outstanding with 11 strikeouts today, and really, Steve, you look back in that sixth inning after Davis couldn't handle that foul pop, that gave Thompson new life. Had he been able to reach, then Brent Abernathy would have been able to come up with a chance to do some damage and maybe put Babe Ruth back in front. But here it is, the strikeout of Thompson, and now Abernathy leads off the inning in a two-run game. So even if he hits another one out, they've still got the lead. Up and in for ball one. Well, Lucy, unless you're the tying run of the plate, usually your manager wants you to take a strike first. And I think that's what he did that time. He faked the bunt. Want to take a good look at Bess, see if he's delivering from the same spot. He took another one. It looks like he might think about bunting, but that's for him is really taking a pitch. I would much rather have him be in a hitting position and take it because that simulates a real swing instead of squaring around and dancing around in the box. Somebody will grab a hold of him, get him out of that mode. Pitch him outside. Two and one. Play will continue here in Pine Bluff, so if you're watching in uh, this neck of the woods, uh, swing on by. We've got a lot of great baseball coming up. And then on Saturday, our championship game, and here in town to throw out the ceremonial first pitch will be President Bill Clinton. He'll be in Little Rock and in Pine Bluff on Saturday. In fact, he's doing his national radio address on Saturday here in Pine Bluff. So the president's coming to town. Should be a lot of fun here at the ballpark. We'll check out that arm. We'll see if we can loosen him up a little bit. Here we talk about Brent Abernathy before the game in our pregame comments. We mentioned he was the player to watch along with Guzman. Look at him. Look at that dirty uniform. Now there's a gamer. Fisted into right, and that's going to be caught by Cash Riley. Oh, had a little tail to it. Riley came on and stuck up the mid-made. A nice play. 
Interestingly enough, Cash Bradley was playing him in a little bit too. That's that's interesting because Abernathy with power to all fields. Cash played him right. They're going to send up a pinch hitter next, and it is Todd Smiley. He is a left-handed hitter. He'll pinch hit for Campiona, came on to play left, and he fouls this away. Todd Smiley is from Cincinnati. He'll be heading off to Logan uh, Junior College in the fall. 385 hitter at LaSalle High School this spring. Bess. And the Bay Ruth All-Stars down to their final out. And a guy who's been getting on base for them is the last chance shortstop Dennis Bruno. One for one with an infield hit. He has walked twice. So for George Foster, Dennis Bruno has been on base three times today. Two away in the seventh. Babe Ruth trailing here four to two. They need some base runners. Surprises with a big curveball to start him off. That's what it looks like after a tough 36 pitch first inning. Stephen Bess, four to two lead. Two outs in the top of the seven. Up and in, ball two, two and oh. I have a special thanks to the Sports Score Technologies people for you know, technologies in all forms of life now, and especially here at the ballpark. A new Windows program, Scorebook Baseball, uh, has brought us all the stats, and we thank them for it. Three and nothing. We had a chance to visit yesterday with Steve Walsh, who's here representing the, the company. And Boy, it's a marvelous uh, program that they have now for your laptop. Keep score pitch by pitch and really makes it easy to accumulate all the stats for your particular team or league. Three and one is the count on Berna. Well, I don't think he's going to fool around with him now. He's going to come back with that fastball. You don't want to put a guy on by a walk. You want to make him earn it. Strike two call. So it has come down to this. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs in the seventh inning. And the payoff pitch walked him. Tough one to take that time. Mm. I think well, I would have been swinging at that one myself. Of course, thou shalt not pass was one of my philosophies. <laughs> That's the fifth walk by Bess. Oh, what a great eye that time. That was a, took a little bit off of that, uh, that fastball. And, oh, tough one to lay off, but he did. It was ball four, a runner on first base now. One swing could tie it up for double, double ABC. And top of the seventh with two out. Oh, and you got a kid who can uh, put a charge in one here. The cleanup man, catcher Chad Suter. Hit a home run here Tuesday against Pine Bluff. Swings through that one. He hasn't been able to do too much with Steve Best today. Steve, it was a bounce out, a strikeout, and a fly ball to right, but I gotta believe, too, that Suter's been smart enough to go to school and figure out by now his fourth at bat in the game. He's gonna get a pretty good handle on what he might expect. Well, he's trying to pull it. He's kind of think more up the middle the other way. The two curveballs in a row. That shows that Best has respect for Suter. But also best the last inning or so has started off the big hitters with breaking balls. See, if you're sitting on the bench watching, you'll see a pattern develop through the game. That's why you can't fool around when you're sitting on the bench. You've got to watch what the pitcher's throwing and what kind of sequence. To second and a seed right at Shelley, but he makes the play and the ball game is over. In the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. And the final score, double ABC four and Babe Ruth two. So as the round robin tournament continues, double ABC improves its record to two and one and Babe Ruth falls to one and two. We'll continue with more from Pine Bluff in just a moment. Well played game for these young men. You see on the board there, no errors for either side. A ABC, four runs on seven hits. Babe Ruth had two runs on three hits. And with this victory, double ABC improves this record to two and one. Let's get more on their story as we go down to the field and Gary Matthews. Thanks a lot, Bob. I have down here with me Steve Adair, who is the manager of the double ABC. What does this do for your club right now, Bob? 
Well, I think it was a, a great ball game. Stephen Bess uh, pitched an outstanding game, and Guzman hit another home run. And Gary, uh, after losing a heartbreaker last night in extra innings, uh, this was really a good comeback, especially after they scored two runs in the first inning this, this morning. Well, your, your team seems to never really die. You have some really great af athletes. I mean, you had your pitcher, I think, hitting in that third spot, and uh, he came up with a big base hit to actually win the uh, the ball game. Is he that good of an athlete? He was hitting in the, in the four hole. Guzman was hitting three, and uh, Stephen Best really has uh, been a, a hitter pitcher as much as a pitcher hitter uh, all through his growing up years. So, yes, uh, he can swing the bat, and you saw how he dominated for six of the seven innings on the mound also. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Really appreciate your comments. Back Back up Thank to you, you, Bob. Okay, thanks, Sarge. And yes, indeed, it was a whale of a pitching performance. And then Bess with the two-run single to center it turned out to be the winning hit. We'll be back with more in a moment. The 1995 Totino's National Amateur All-Star Baseball Tournament has been brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the National Amateur All-Star Baseball Tournament. By Rawlings, the mark of a pro. And by Adidas. We are back in Pine Bluff with our final score here this afternoon. Double ABC 4 and the Babe Ruth All-Stars 2. And as we mentioned, this round robin affair continues. There'll be three more ball games here today. And when it all ends up, we'll have uh, two championship game participants on Saturday afternoon. Are you ready for this? Well, the Extreme Games begin Sunday on ESPN. 27 events in nine sports, including bungee jumping and sky surfing. And uh, Steve Garvey's favorite, the street luge racing. It's the most exciting and technically advanced coverage of extreme sports that you've ever seen. Extreme Games beginning on June 25th, right here on ESPN. Well, we are between games here, but our coverage is over. We'll be back with closing comments from Pine Bluff in just a moment. 4-2, our final double ABC win. Steve Garvey is a nicely played ball game today. Well, the key guys uh, made the key plays. Of course, Abernathy hitting the home run, Guzman with the home run, Wilkerson pitched well, only made one bad pitch, and of course, Stephen Bess, the pitching and hitting star of the game. Just after the first inning, just shut him down. Got the winning hit, two RBI single. He's our player of the game. So again, the final for Double ABC four, Babe Ruth two, for Gary Matthews, Steve Garvey. I'm Bob Rathman. So long from Pine Bluff, Arkansas.